So I'm actually uh, um, a scientist, right? Uh, I got into web development for fun, and actually it has helped me then get jobs because, you know, the U.S. isn't doing science right now. Um, <laughs> um, but some of the interesting things I like to do are thought experiments, right? This is a very scientific thing. Uh, how might one want to do certain things uh, better or differently, try and challenge what we've done before? And uh, in this talk, I'll talk about some of these things. There are still some open questions, and if I present them as absolute truths, it's my absolute truth right now. <laughs> Um, and I might play with the screen resolution a couple of times so you can read different things. Um, about this talk, this talk is available at mojoconf.joel-berger.com. You can follow along if you want, so you can poke at the links and things. Um, it does assume an understanding of uh, Mojolicious apps and Mojo IO loop delay. Um, not maybe deeply understanding Mojo IO loop delay, but you've at least seen it before. Um, the talk itself is a Mojolicious app. Uh, it's um, available from my GitHub. Uh, it's written using an application that's still um, being written uh, at times, uh, AppMojo Slides, which is my own thing. Um, the presentation itself is actually the configuration file. The slides are then templates. Um, and then the code highlighting comes from uh, my uh, PPI plugin. As you can see, there are still some quirks like I forget to test it, 1024 resolution. <laughs> um, so when we write our normal code, we always write modular code. Why? Because we like to reuse. We like not repeating ourselves, as we've already heard from several of the talks. Uh, we want to separate our concerns. And because those are easier to test. Can you read it? Maybe I should bump it up like that. We also like non-blocking code because it has lower memory consumption, we have less servers that way, uh, it's more scalable, and it's just plain cool. And Mojalicious gives it to us, which is nice. And so you get your uh, controller classes are often pretty simple methods, right? We shift off the controller, we call some methods to process the data, and we render. No big deal. But then the things we dislike are modular non-blocking code. I, I did myself, and I've seen in many other codes, where we were so nicely compacted in our controller methods that we're blocking, all of a sudden now we put all of our business logic in the controller action. Why? It's, oh, it's so hard to uh, abstract out things when it's non-blocking. So we end up with big IO loop delays, and finally we render. So let's imagine some forum software, um, just a regular web forum. Uh, and because this is my thought experiment, I always try and put in lots of different things. Um, Mango being the Mongo DB driver that uh, Sebastian wrote. And Batman and I have been working on an ODM for it called Mandel. It's still really in its infancy. If you happen to like patterns, um, coming up with sort of greenfield stuff and want to work on Mandel with us, please talk to us. Um, we are half inventing it as we go, which is probably bad. <laughs> um, but let's talk about some two classes. We have user objects, um, which represent just the user, and a post object. So when you make some new comment to a thread, you make a new object that gets stored in a collection of posts. Um, this code also is available at Mojo Forum. This is really... Uh, uh, a toy example so far, don't please put this into production anywhere. You wouldn't, it's kind of ugly, but. So why do we want to use this as an example? Well, it's a good concrete example. You've all used it um, here and there. And because forums always promote discussion, right? Yeah? Someone is wrong on the internet. So let's define our model. This is how you define a model in uh, Mandel. Uh, and it, these are truncated a bit, but um, the basic field that we care about in the user object is his name, his or her name. And then we have two has many's, posts and threads, which point to different classes. Um, I'm only including the threads for completeness here. I'm not really going to talk about how the threads work. And then there's a similar thing for the post. 
we have uh, a field called content that's just the bulk text. Now, of course, you'd want to have other fields like date and uh, whatever else you might think would be necessary for each post. And actually, I was going to just quickly fire one up for you here. So it's really ugly, because I don't care about pretty at this point. Uh, we have a list of threads. Uh, let me go onto my first thread here and say, hello, mojo conf. And we post it to the thread. Not so bad. Uh, what's the, there we go. So let's look at what some blocking routes for this, or blocking methods would look like in this class. First we add some simple collection um, helpers. Uh, the app has the attribute for the model, and then we ask for the collection user and collection post. And then we have just pointers to two uh, helpers here. Can you read, I, I'm worried that you guys can't read it. If you can't read it, we're gonna have real troubles. Let's, Pop it up. Uh, if that's the problem, I don't know what I can do about it. <laughs> is it really the highlighting is the problem? Oh, oh, I see what you mean. To make it all white? Does that help? <laughs> no. Oh, gosh. Okay. Well, so here we just build our helpers to find user and find user posts. Oh, you found my other little thing there, if you double click. Here we have just a simple blocking call that calls users, search, and single. So this is how I would find a user by name, get a user object. And then if I find, want to find all of the posts made by that user, I can call find user posts with a user it will then call the find user if I have to. So if I gave it a string instead of the object, it will actually go and pull that for me. And it will return then the posts. You don't have to know exactly all the methods, but you can imagine how they work. And now I want to turn these into mojo I loop delays because I want to make them non blocking. So IO loop delay gives us some handy dandy things like you can make the steps be sequential if you have uh, calls which will depend on previous calls. And we can do multiple blo non-blocking actions per step. Uh, we can handle our errors and most importantly for this discussion, they're nestable. So the fact that I'm already inside of a delay doesn't mean I can't be inside of another one. So if this was our blocking find user method, we might start with this as our non-blocking user method, find user method. We create a delay. We call the same mechanisms until we get to the actual database read, and we pass it the delay begin. This returns a callback that will start the non-blocking action and keep track of it for us. And eventually pass forward the error, if there was an error, and the user uh, object and because we call it with a callback, we then want to invoke the callback against the controller and passing that error end user object. So let's again look here. It's not so bad. And again, you don't need to memorize these things. That's why I have the slides online. And that's why you should be following along online. Then you can actually read it, see? <laughs> Now let's look at the comparable thing for find all, you know, find the user posts. The first layer of translation is pretty simple. It kind of does the same thing. We just call the posts action and we pass to a callback. Except we kind of skipped one thing. This branch lets us say, if you gave a string, go find the user object first so that I can get the posts from that user. How do I do that here? How do I conditionally call code in a non-blocking architecture? I have to keep passing these delay begins. This is where things get a little bit hairy. 
we can add this if else. So if you, of course, want to do something a little more clever than if reference user, but this just basically could be if I have an object and it is of the right type. For the short time, I'm just going to use if ref user. So if I already have an object, I can pass it forward, no error, user. Otherwise, look up the user by name with the delay begin callback. And now I have the rest of the method as I had it before. So we're done, right? It's well translated. Uh, let's refactor. Because this is still not really reusable. We're sort of tightly bound to how I intended to call that method. So this is, again, the code we had before. We have this if else branch that would either pass uh, the object, if I have an object, or else find the user name user object by name and pass it forward. But this really actually is more of the logic that has to do with finding the user. So maybe I move that if else block up here. Now, the find user object, the find user method will always return a user object even if you passed in a user object. Who cares? If I pass it a user object, just give it back to me. If I give you a string, go look up the object by string. And the reason that is nice is now this code is simple to read again. The find user method here can almost be ensure user, ensure that I have a user object. If I don't, try and get one. But now I don't have branching logic here. I just keep doing a delay begin, delay begin, and eventually pass back to my callback. I think that's a much simpler pattern, and I'll prove it to you in a little bit when I show you how some of the other helpers look. But what about exceptions? Huh? I skipped that one, didn't I? What if something goes wrong? In your blocking architecture, you already know what's going to happen. It's just going to throw. You could catch it if you want. What we've missed here is if find user returns some error here, we didn't do anything with it. Well, the simplest thing to do would be to return early and pass that error forward. And it would show up in there. That's what you were talking about with passing all those errors forward. Well, it's fine when you've only got one intermediary step, but now when you get three, four, five intermediary steps, it starts to be a pain. So rather than do that, let's die on the error if we have an error. But now we always have to remember to attach our on error callback to the delay object. And because it expects the first object to be the invocant to the callback to be the controller, you have to close over this controller. It's a little scary, but it's not as scary as it could be. And this now is sort of a reusable pattern. Just right after you enter the next block, die on all errors. What you get for free is, if there is some method you didn't write, so far all these methods have been methods I've written. If there's some method you didn't write and it throws, great, you're catching it. Good job. And that's why I recommend not passing the errors forward. It works while your methods return an error. But if something up the call stack throw an error, you didn't catch it. So this gives you both in one shot. And actually, what you didn't see, because I'm not showing them side by side anymore, I've made the find user method do the same. There's one more little thing you can do to make your code reusable. We've assumed so far that you actually have an I.O. loop. Yeah, you're running under Morbo or Daemon or Hypmintoad. Great, you've got an I.O. loop. What if you're testing? What if you're using your application from the command line? There's no I.O. loop. So now you can't use these methods? Mm. No. That's where you get this 
thing you've seen laying around the documentation all over the place. Maybe you didn't know why it was there. That's why it's there. This basically says start the IO loop unless the IO loop was already running. And then if you had to start it, stop it again when you're done. Um, I go into that in one of my blog posts um, that I'll link through at the end uh, if that concept is confusing to you. But I do that here in the second method as well. Um, actually, before I go on to that, let me just show you what I meant by from the command line. So I can run, uh, and actually I want to, I like data printer. Does anyone else like data printer? Yeah, we got one at least. Uh, bin, Mojo forum, eval. So here I'm going to eval, I'm going to run some code against my application. Find user posts. I'm going to find, oh, come on. My posts. And I'm going to data printer the results. Of course, you can't read that. That would be too useful. Here, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Clear. Yeah. If you want to see that one, I'll show it to you later. But believe me, what I'm doing is I'm finding user posts, Joel, and I'm printing the stack. And sure enough, I can get out, even though this was non-blocking and I'm running it from my command line, I can look and see what kind of objects I got out. Look, here's my first post. Here's hello mojoconf. I've got all the data that data printer gives me and I didn't have to go through some horrible hack to, to use it. So my helpers are all available to me on the command line. They're available to me, um, as I'll see now. So does it work? How do we know if it works? We test it. So I can make a new instance of Mojo Forum. I connect it now to a local uh, localhost test database. Uh, so then I can drop the database and be sure I have a new fresh database. I inject the user. Um, this is a good pattern to get used to in your tests. I know it's tempting to run your test in the callback. How do you know the callback ran? If you put your test inside of the callback and the callback never fires, it doesn't fail. It doesn't happen. So especially if you're using done testing, which is a nice thing, what you'll see at the end instead is that all your tests passed when who knows if the one passed there. So this is something Sebastian taught me quite early in my Mojalicious days. Just close back over your argument stack. Once this runs, um, it, will, it, will non, it will block uh, because we put in that delay wait. And now we can just do our regular old testing as if we ever, as we've ever done. No errors, it's the right object type, the name's correct, done testing. And I'm sure you believe me that if I were to run it, it passes. The thing I often do is I often put an extra line in here to make sure that I'm not using my real database, because you don't want to accidentally drop your real database. Um, I left that out here, but you know you can make up something. I actually would recommend that be a helper as well. You know, am I prod database? All right, so this is now the dump of the entire helpers that I make for Mojo Forms so far. I have find users, find user posts, find user threads. These are all the posts by user, all the threads by user. Create a new thread, find a new thread, add a post. Populate puts in some sample data. Um, but now, as I was saying, so now that find user can take a string or an object, I also do the same pattern with find a thread by name, whether this is by object or by name. Now I can keep calling these. Here I have a find user. 
Here I have a find user. This is finding all the threads by user. Add a post. I have to find the user object and the thread object. Isn't it nice that I don't have to have all kinds of conditional logic there? They just do it. Ensure that I have a, a, a user. Ensure that I have a thread. Die on my errors. Create some new content. Add the posts to both objects. Die in your errors again, pass out to the callback. And now, though I won't actually show it to you, my controller methods are all real clean. Each action has one purpose, maybe to add a thread, maybe to add a user. You only have to call one of these guys. All of these are testable, though admittedly I haven't done that for all of them because this is just a toy project. But testing them wouldn't be hard. It'd be no harder than writing the other tests. And fine, yeah, I put say done at the fine. That's just a populate method. It's not something you'd usually call. So that's all I really have to talk about for, for those. I don't know how much time do I have. 15 minutes? Yeah, you knew I wasn't going to talk long enough, right? <laughs> I was worried about going over people's head, going under people's head. Decided to leave it there. I have some other things I could talk about. Uh, Object-oriented plugins are something I've been pushing for for a long time. Um, Sebastian and I have thought about what a pattern, what a, what a core pattern for that would look like, and we keep not liking it. Um, so I can show you quickly what I do with my Humane plugin. Oh, come on now. And the reason I picked this one is I think it's the cleanest of the ones I've done so far. That's silly. This is the real key. I have a helper that just closes over the plugin instance. Real simple. You call the humane helper you get the plugin back. Most of your plugins uh, make an instance of the plugin, those attach some helpers, and then the plugin instance falls off the end of the register method, and you never have that object again. Why? I, I like objects. I can store what version I'm using, what, what um, path to the render, uh, to the templates that I have, which theme should I be using. Maybe you want to change theme midstream. All that's real easy if you do object oriented. We already know how to do that. The problem has been what to attach it to. So I just attach it to a helper of the same name. And that's actually important because helpers are you know, in a global namespace, as you were. If you're going to use this plug, this pattern, I recommend that you use the name of your plugin. So this is Mojalicious colon colon plugin colon colon humane. If you just only save that one name, humane, or whatever your plugin name is, then we don't all squash each other's helpers. Um, that's the biggest reason I kind of want some kind of a core architecture to do this, but we haven't worked out a great way of doing that yet. By the way, if you need in-browser notifications, this is a fun little plugin. I also use the same sort of architecture for PPI. Um, it's not maybe as clean, but that's because PPI isn't really as clean. <laughs> um, I could really confuse you with uh, my long polling API watching script, um, Mojo Friend Feed. I think I would probably just muddy the waters at this point. I've talked about enough crazy things so far. So if you're interested in, in watching some long poll API, um, come talk to me. I'm really proud of this, but I, I think it's maybe not a, as general a topic, and I don't want to confuse people. So for more information, um, if this whole talk was completely over your head, and that's fine if it was, um, you can start at the beginning. I have a, um, an early version of this same slide application um, running just an introduction to Mojalicious. I have actually also another set of slides that's written in the same way, but it's a science -y talk. If you like that one, I encourage you to look it up too. 
I also really recommend my blog series on the non-blocking architectures. This link will get you to part one, and there's actually three parts. A few people have already said that it's helped them, and I'm happy for that. Um, I really like explaining these things. Other than that, thank you all. Thank you to the sponsors. Thank you to Salva and the other guys here in Oslo, Marcus, Batman. Um, this is really a great thing. I hope it continues. <laughs>